with the pandemic ongoing, many people have been spending a lot more time on the Internet. That's led to a surge in online scams. According to statistics from the Criminal Investigation Bureau, there were more than 2,300 cases of investment scams in just the first half of 2021. In most of those cases, online fraudsters play the part of a potential employer or romantic partner to trick people into buying fake investment products. Surprisingly, victims of this type of fraud tend to be adults in their 20s and 30s and many are highly educated. How did scammers convince them to part with their cash? Tonight in our Sunday special report, victims come forward to speak with us and to tell you how to identify a scam. Everything was so beautiful in the beginning. This person came into my life when I needed someone the most. Who, Who knew, knew this would, this be, would the be the start, start of, of a nightmare? nightmare? I met him in early 2021 on a dating site where users go by their real names. Thirty-nine year old Xiao Jing is a standard nine to five office worker. After being single for most of her thirties, she downloaded a dating app in early 2021 and finally found love. My first impression of him was that he had a sunny personality. He moved to China as a child and returned to Taiwan to start his business. At first, Xiao Jing wondered why a handsome, well-heeled man like him was interested in an ordinary woman like herself. But he charmed her with his sincerity and put her anxieties at ease. He messaged me at mealtimes like clockwork, asking if I'd eaten yet. He'd asked me if I was busy, if I had a break, if I was staying hydrated, things like that. He acted just like a man does when he's courting a woman. He inquired after my well-being. He said things like, the vibe you give off feels perfect to me. He emphasized that my looks didn't have a bearing on that vibe. Xiao Jing texted him day after day and found herself falling in love. Although they had yet to video chat or make plans to meet, she felt sure that he was Mr. Right. As time went on, they began to use endearments with one another. Baby, can I call you later? I'm driving. Later on, he wanted to make voice calls. Text messages don't convey emotions, but over voice calls, you can immediately hear the emotions of the person. These cards are from when he tried to win my trust. He actually sent me flowers twice. Along with these cards, it made me feel as if we were already inseparable lovers. His outpouring of affection reeled her in closer and closer. Xiao Jing began to secretly plan their future as a couple. But it was around this time that money made an entrance into their relationship. Afterward, he messaged me and said, My wife, look at this. I recently made this investment. He showed me a receipt that displayed how much money he had made. In a leading manner, he asked me if I wanted to make an investment together. I was never really clear on the details of the investment model. All I knew was sometimes you'd buy big and sometimes you'd buy small. He made a point of telling me, you are special. This opportunity is one in a million. You have this opportunity now and you're thinking of not seizing it. Now I'm willing to guide you, which seems to mean that I see you as a future partner. Xiao Jing was skeptical about the lottery website he showed her. But to secure their future together, she put down an investment of 5,000 NT. She thought she'd end up losing it, but was delighted to receive a profit of more than 4,200 NT. After seeing that sum in her bank account, she began to believe that the website was legitimate. She invested more and more of her money at her boyfriend's continued encouragement. He told me that if I put up capital on this investment website, I'd get some bonus cash. The website was also running a promotion for couples, which involved investing in amounts that are symbolically relevant to couples. The first time, I invested about 3 million NT. Mm. 
transaction by transaction, Xiao Jun sent years of her savings to the investment website. Meanwhile, a woman in her city was falling for a different investment scam. After being placed on unpaid leave, I went on Facebook to look for part-time jobs. One ad was recruiting for order processing staff. The hours were very flexible and the jobs seemed very attractive. You could earn money right at home, making 200 NT, 300 NT, 500 NT a day. I thought that would be a nice bit of pocket change, so I made an inquiry via a mobile messaging app. Hello, may I ask if this role is remote or office-based? Let me briefly go over the role with you. We are order processing staff and we deal with exchange rate spreads. Our income is 360 to 1,000 NT a day. Although the job allowed her to work from home, Xuan Xuan had to pay a deposit of 1,000 NT before starting. After paying the deposit, she was added to a group chat with more than 300 people. There were consultants and supervisors who were at the top of the hierarchy. There were also rank-and-file employees who came on board the same time as Xuan Xuan or before her. By all appearances, Xuan Xuan was joining an ordinary company. But she was puzzled to find that her job, which she thought involved helping other people make money, actually involved placing orders for herself. That 1,000 NT we deposited at the start, the consultant said that the profits from our orders would be our own. He'd say things like, go big on either, and then we would all place an order accordingly. I was able to earn more than 7,000 NT. I received money once, and that made me lower my guard. Because she was making money, Shen Shen didn't really question how. Every day, she placed orders the way she was told to by her consultant. In the company chat room, her colleagues raved about their own earnings, whetting her appetite for bigger and bigger profits. More than a month after she joined the group chat, a consultant announced an Ether investment product that was exclusively for company staff. To buy this investment product, employees had to first exit the company chat room and then message the consultant privately to place an order. Why we had to leave the group chat, I don't know. I definitely didn't know at that time. My colleagues would leave the chat room. Then they would return and everybody would congratulate them, saying, congratulations on coming back. Then they would post notes in the chat room in line with the SOP. They'd write in all these real life details and it wasn't like they were posting 30 to 40 words as a formality. They type up to 500 words, lots of text, and they always attached a photo. It made you think that the users were truly just moms and dads raising their kids. Only later did she learn that the colleagues who returned to the group chat were not who they seemed. They were fraudsters pretending to be the users who left. Users like Xuan Xuan would leave the chat room, transfer a large sum of money, and discover that they'd been tricked. But they would be unable to return to the chat room to warn the unsuspecting. After Xuan Xuan transferred 150,000 NT, all communication from her consultant and other colleagues came to a sudden end. I went on the internet and began frantically searching for information about the investment website. That day, I discovered that I had been scammed. These are sums of money I sent to the other party. Here's 600,000 NT, and here's 1.2 million NT. As for Xiao Jing, her boyfriend went incommunicado after she transferred a total of 7 million NT. She was forced to wake up to the fact that he was a fraudster. On the last day, I couldn't reach him at all. I went online and searched for his investment app. On the National Police Agency's website, I found a notice about how people have been scammed by the app. It was only then that I accepted the fact that I had been deceived. These are IOUs for loans I took from my friends. This one is for 400,000 NT, and the other is for 360,000 NT. I also took out bank loans. Altogether, I borrowed more than 2 million NT. It will take me four to five years to pay it all back. Xiao Jing and Xuan Xuan fell victim to a common scam in which fake friends solicit money for bogus investments. They are not alone. According to National Police Agency data, social media has driven a recent rise in dating and job-related investment scams. There was an especially sharp rise during Taiwan's first COVID wave in 2021 when internet users went up and gave scammers a chance to cash in.
From January to mid-July of that year, there were more than 2,300 cases of investment fraud, which cost victims more than 800 million NT. Investment scams outstripped every other type of fraud in terms of consumer losses. While investigating this story, FTV's Hall of Descent spoke to a number of investment scam victims. To our surprise, many of them encountered the same situations as Xiao Jing and Shen Xuan. We found that fraud rings were mostly following the same few scripts. These days, those investment websites and investment apps are very intricately designed. Most people would be unable to tell that they're fake. Because they are fake, your profits are also fake. The charts and numbers are programmed to change so that you feel like you're making money. For law enforcement, it can be hard to stop scammers and close websites to keep them from targeting people in Taiwan. This is because many scam rings base their computer operations abroad in order to evade investigation. Without jurisdiction, Taiwan police can't arrest fraudsters overseas. All they can do is alert the public to the latest scam websites. On our 165 anti-fraud website and Facebook page, we routinely publish the URLs of the latest investment scam sites. Recently, we incorporated web resources from the Financial Supervisory Commission and the Securities Investment Trust and Consulting Association. You can make inquiries to see whether a given investment website was reviewed by the Financial Supervisory Commission. But police investigations can take time, and scam warnings often come too late. Whenever one website or online persona is exposed, criminals quickly produce a replacement to carry on their scheme. For police, fighting fraud is like playing whack-a-mole, and people continue to be swindled every day. When we ran the research, we found that we had all been tricked by different websites and that all these websites had the same IP address. These days, fraud groups change to a new platform every three to four weeks on YouTube, Facebook, and even Instagram. All the ads targeting small investors contain links to scam operations. Social media, dating sites, on popular communication platforms, fraudsters lurk under fake names and fake photos. For many internet users, it can be hard to detect a trap. People are not as capable of distinguishing truth from lies as they think they are. A psychology study once showed that people can distinguish truth from lies with an accuracy rate of about 54%. That's only slightly better than flipping a coin. But people are often overly confident and believe that if someone is lying, they'd be able to tell. Because of this, we fall for scams without realizing it. Psychologist Ling Yuxuan says she even knows a psychologist who fell for a scam. With so many fraud tactics out there, it would be impossible to recognize them all, she says. But there are ways to improve one's defenses. Actually, I think that when you're training yourself against being deceived, the most important thing is to be aware that you can, in fact, be deceived. This awareness is very important because when you know it's possible to be deceived, you're more likely to talk to your friends about your situation. You can go a step further and think about what your life is lacking the most. For example, do you often feel lonely? Do you have a strong feeling of financial insecurity? This helps you identify the vulnerabilities that people might try to take advantage of. There are also clues that can help you spot a scam artist. One example is if a love interest never wants to video chat or meet in person. Be suspicious if an investment yields a small profit before you're asked to invest a much larger sum. The prevailing public opinion is that if you fall for a scam, it's because of your own greed. That is what people assume. Only after you've experienced it yourself do you realize that anybody can be preyed upon by such a scam because there might be dozens of people on the other side all working on you at the same time. They analyze your emotions and your chat responses to plan the next step in the scheme. 
No one thinks they can fall for a scam until it happens to them, often to devastating results. So next time an online message catches your eye, tread carefully and remember that not everything is as it seems.